Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they've encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratier Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. Philip Doddridge is widely known as the author of The Rise and Progress of Religion in the Soul. This book was so widely circulated and translated into so many languages that it has been called the most useful book of the 18th century. Doddridge wrote it at the suggestion of Isaac Watts, whom he regarded as one of his dearest friends. In that book, Philip wrote this, Religion, in its most general view, is such a sense of God in the soul and such a conviction of our obligations to Him and of our dependence upon Him as shall engage us to make it our great care to conduct ourselves in a manner which we have reason to believe will be pleasing to Him. In other words, profound, desperate, and saving faith. Doddridge wrote from experience, not just theory, He lived while he lived, as he wrote in his paraphrase of the New Testament. The stanza goes like this, Live while you live, the epicure would say, and seize the pleasures of the present day. Live while you live, the sacred preacher cries, and give to God each moment as it flies. Lord, in my views let both united be. I live to pleasure when I live to thee. He clung to Christ as his treasure and joy. The work of Christ on the cross appears often in the hymns that he wrote. One of his choicest, and my favorite, is a meditation on Christ crucified. The first stanza says this, Behold the amazing sight, the Savior lifted high. Behold the Son of God's delight, expire in agony. Philip Doddridge was born in London on June 26, 1702. At his birth, Philip showed so little sign of life that he was laid aside as dead. But one of the attendants, thinking she perceived some movement or breath, cared for the feeble infant. Indeed, he was near death, but the tenderness of the woman and the decree of God made it impossible that his life would expire so soon after it was kindled. Philip was the 20th child of Daniel and Elizabeth Doddridge. His mother was the daughter of an exiled clergyman, the Reverend John Bauman, who, for conscience' sake and Christ's sake, left Prague in 1626. He abandoned a large estate at the age of 21, traveling on foot, dressed as a peasant. He carried with him a modest amount of money that he had sewn into his clothes and a Bible of Luther's translation. Philip's grandfather on his father's side was rector of Shepperton, who was ejected following the Act of Uniformity in 1662 and became a nonconformist minister. Philip counted it a great honor to have descended from these suffering saints of Christ. His mother, Elizabeth, a devoted and serious Christian, taught Philip the history of the Old and New Testaments before he could even read. She used pictures on painted tiles that were affixed to the wall in the family room. This had a tremendous impact on him. He frequently recommended to parents to imitate her example. For whom, for whom, my heart, were all these sorrows born? Why did he feel that piercing smart and wear that crown of thorn? Doddridge's first charge was at Kibworth in 1730. He attended his church duties and also started an academy at Northampton, 
designed for the training of young men for ministry. Here he spent the rest of his life overseeing both the college and the church, all the while writing his numerous and voluminous works. Philip loved the God he served and lived ever upon him. He arose every morning at 5 a.m. His custom was to spring out of bed, singing, My God, and is thy table spread, and does thy cup with love overflow. Thither be all thy children led, and let them all its sweetness know. In the midst of suffering, he rejoiced in the Lord's sovereign hand. His treasure was Christ, even more than life itself. He wrote, It is impossible to express the support and comfort which God gave me on my sickbed. His promises were my continual feast. They seemed, as it were, to be all united in one stream of glory and poured into my breast. When I thought of dying, it sometimes made my very heart leap within me. Once, in his sickness, Lady Huntingdon entered the room to attend to him and found him with his Bible laying open before him and weeping. She said, What, in tears again, my dear doctor? He replied faintly, I am weeping, madam, but they are tears of joy and comfort. I can give up my country, my friends, my relatives into the hands of God, and as to myself, I can as well go to heaven from Lisbon as from my own study here in Northampton. For love of us he bled, and all in torture died. T'was love that bowed his fainting head and opened his gushing side. His doctor had advised him to travel to Lisbon in hopes that the change of climate might help his condition. His sickness was growing worse. He wrote, My night sweats are weakening to my frame, but the most distressing nights to this frail body have been as the beginning of heaven to my soul. God hath, as it were, let heaven down upon me in those nights of weakness and waking. Blessed be his name. Doddridge did go to the warmer climate of Lisbon for the winter of 1751, setting sail on September 30th with his wife. Two weeks after landing in Lisbon, he landed on another shore. He exchanged this earth with the sunny plains of the Canaan above. Afterwards, his wife sat down to write to their children. She said, Oh, my dear children, help me to praise him. Such supports, such consolations, such comforts he has granted that my mind at times is astonished and is ready to burst into songs of praise under its most exquisite distress. We see and we adore, we trust that dying love, we feel its strong, attractive power, we lift our souls above. Doddridge wrote a great number of hymns, some of which are still in use today. This fact about Doddridge is unknown by many, but the fact is that each week, while his heart was still warm from his work in the text and manuscript preparation, he would arrange the salient thoughts of the message into verse that could be sung as a hymn. And this hymn was sung at the close of his preaching. For instance, after a sermon on 1 Peter 2, 7, Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. He gave out these tender verses. Jesus, I love thy charming name. Tis music to mine ear. Fain would I sound it out so loud that earth and heaven could hear. Dr. James Hamilton, referring to this practice of Doddridge, said, Hymns like these are spiritual amber. 
Most of the sermons to which they originally pertained have disappeared forever, but at once beautiful and buoyant, these sacred strains are destined to carry the devout emotion of Doddridge to every shore where his master is loved and where his mother tongue is spoken. Behold the amazing sight, nor trace his griefs alone, but from the cross pursue our flight to his triumphant throne. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to Him.